Welcome back. What can I say, my next guest, that she has not said herself? She is quite simply a phenomenon who will soon be taking time off from her constant round of state visits to grace the London stage again. Ladies and gentlemen, Dame Edna Everidge. Dressed for this <laughs> Isn't this beautiful? It's multi layered, a bit like my personality. Was <laughs> it is a stunning outfit, but I feel you might have got the wrong date. It's a tribute to St. Valentine. <laughs> no, there's been a lot of interesting research done into the life of St. Valentine, and it, apparently he did pass away today. Uh, <laughs> everyone was wrong. Well, actually, he died about, well, on the 14th, but he lingered. <laughs> Do you know anything about St. Valentine? Nothing about anything. He was, a, he was a saint and he was a martyr. This is a little mystical like you were getting when you are into view. Yeah. He was a martyr <laughs> and he died, Michael, in an awful, tragic way like a lot of those martyrs did. As a matter of fact, it was a bit yucky and I'm not sure that I should tell you on this lovely show, but the kiddies are probably asleep by now. He was, he was kissed to death. <laughs> Kissed to death by an entire Roman legion, Mr. <laughs> I'm afraid it legionnaire's disease got him in there. <laughs> no, he was the, the first known victim of legionnaire's disease. He wasn't able to pin it on one particular legionnaire. <laughs> I suppose it's a bit like if you're nicked by a circular saw, you can't be entirely sure which one did it. <laughs> Anyway, that was what happened to him, and this is a bit of a tribute to him. Little hearts, see, woven in there. And the cupids. Oh, they're lovely. gorgeous. Oh, beautiful. They're available for adoption, those little cupids. <laughs> they look as though they come from a well-known London theatre. <laughs> you've all appeared on the West End stage, and uh, you are about to return, Dame Edna. I don't know if the others have seen your gentle, understated performance. Would you like to tell them what you're going to do? Well, he calls it gentle and understated, which shows you that he hasn't seen it either. <laughs> Oh, well, I, I'm myself, basically. I loved you in applause. I was out there in the audience clapping away and in Sweet Bird of Youth by Tennessee Why didn't you come backstage? I should have. I was a little, a little shy. Isn't that uh. funny to think that I was a little shy? <laughs> and, uh, and jealous, I must admit. <laughs> Michael, thank you for bringing two great legends together tonight. Oh, two and a half. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, please. I should say, aren't we being awful? I should say, two and three quarters, shouldn't I? <laughs> but uh, I also saw you in Greece in the 60s. Did anyone know that he was in Greece on the West End stage? Did he say that in his interview? It was mentioned, yes. Was it? Yes, but people might have missed it. <laughs> going to make a cup of tea or something of the kind of this way. But I saw you, and when I saw you in Greece playing the title role, I think it was. Greece. Part of Greece. <laughs> I, <laughs> I said to myself, that man is going to be famous one day. He's going to make it to the top. He's going to be on a talk show with me, I said to myself. <laughs> so, yeah, you're going to be that big, and you are, my darling. And I like the way you took a stand against this silly old chauvinistic fundamental, I think, sex symbol thing. Because we are actors, aren't we? We are, we are people. We have our own integrity, and you're not a sex symbol to me, darling. In fact, you actually are a bit of a turn-off. <laughs> You bring out the maternal instinct in me. You know, when I see you in some of those films, you're either wearing a military uniform or in your little birthday suit. I see your little bits jiggling around. And, uh, not so little. Not, not so little. And your little front, little front body. You know what? You know when I 
see that. Do you know what my fingers are doing, Miss Bethel? <laughs> They're reaching for the talcum powder. <laughs> because I want to give him a little dusting. <laughs> I want to put a little absorbent nappy between those legs. <laughs> because I'm a very maternal person, and I feel that towards you. I do. But I... I'm doing my yeah. own show in the West End. You've got to come. <laughs> Third season. What's the name of that It's show? called Back with a Vengeance. Mm. It's my, it's a return season by popular demand. You see, people have, a lot of people haven't seen it yet at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane, which you oh, mentioned. Mm. And though you've not played it, you could perhaps occupy the Royal Box if it isn't occupied by one of my own friends from the Royal Family. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm longing to see your beautiful film, Mr. North, too. Thank and you. And also, of course, your lovely film. I've got it written <laughs> on my... <laughs> write it on my hand because I didn't want to put you both in each other's movies. <laughs> you realize, it's really marvellous. Please promise me, viewers, you'll see these marvellous people in their marvellous vehicles. The danger of writing on your hand in ink is that it does give you warts, I was told. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Just I... as well I only write on my hand. <laughs> I'm surprised that you've not, over the years, had offers yourself from Hollywood. Oh, I Dana. have. I have had offers from Hollywood. I don't make a big thing of that, but I mean, I think most of the parts you see Meryl Streep in, I've refused. <laughs> <laughs> she told me that. Actually. Did she? she told me that. Dear Meryl, she's adorable. They also wanted me to be in the Wales in August. Do you remember that? Oh, Playing yeah. Lillian Gish's mother. I said no. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't have been in makeup for about a month before that, wouldn't I, Miss McCall? And, uh, and also, there were so many, uh, with due respect to your ex, there were so many senior citizens, weren't there, in that film? Yes, <laughs> the yes, car park, can you imagine senior, it? Yeah. Senior, 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 <laughs> senior. Car park full of Zimmer frames and ramps. <laughs> but, uh, Gorillas in the Mist, I was offered something and I didn't bother to read the script. I'm good in the mist. <laughs> Do you have strong feelings about nudity on stage? Nudity? No. I, well... Or anywhere else? I can take it a little. Nudity? I, I mean, in the bath, I think it's appropriate. <laughs> but I don't have any other strong feelings about it at all. I, I, if it's people, if they have a lovely, if a lovely body, if they're beautifully formed, and I like to look at them. <laughs> but I am consulted. I, I'm more of a... I'm more of a guru. It's, it's, it's a compliment to me, isn't it? And please, I'm going to give you both my phone number after this. You, won't, you can keep you it. Won't need to, you won't need to go as far as the Dalai Lama for little insights into life, because I get a lot of calls from the members of the royal family, as a matter of fact. They had this chat line. You know, this chat line has been closed down by British Telecom, yeah. mainly because the Queen and me were using it night and day. <laughs> So Fergie, have you heard of her mm. and her husband, the mm. Duke and Duchess of York? They've got this lovely little baby, and they wanted to call it Edna because, after me, is a little tribute. But I said it would give it too much to live up to. <laughs> <laughs> Edna has royal precedence because there was a Queen Edna of the Jutes many, many moons ago. But I said no. I said you've got to be careful. They wanted to call it Katie too. I said your name is York. I said you've got to think of the initials. And I said you could be, you know, you could be on. Quite slippery ground. <laughs> In the end, we decided on B, Beatrice, little B, and I nursed baby B while Fergie and the husband were in Australia. Do you have, with your insight, do you have uh, anything to tell us about the uh, leaving behind of the baby when Fergie went to Australia? Yes, a lot of people criticise Fergie because she went all the way to Australia and didn't take the kitty with her. And uh, I advised her to do that. I said, look, they've got enough babies in Australia. And I said... <laughs> Dangerous taking kiddies to Australia because of the marsupial dangers there, you know. <laughs> the kiddies could be, you know, could be molested by a marsupial on the apron at the airport. So I looked after little B. You babysat? I babysat this royal baby. Can you see the picture oh, Miss Bacall yes, was? I can. And that again brought no, back my maternal it. instincts, Richard. <laughs> in fact, I lactated as soon as I held this little baby in my hand. I, I ruined a Giorgio Armani blouse. <laughs> Looking at you now, and the little maternal instincts are surging. I'm glad I'm wearing my nursing pads. <laughs> 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 
this isn't I've been doing parts. too much talking, and I'm interested in these people. And Richard, do you know it. Australia? Have you ever worked or been to Australia? The yeah. airport, that's all. Oh. I don't know anything about it. Now you do. My first Australian, that's true. Well, you're not typical Australian, are you? I no, I don't think any of us are typical. We belong. We're citizens of the world, aren't we? And we give pleasure. I loved what the little llama said to you. It's a mystical thing, isn't it? Something you ponder on. Are you angry or are you pretending to be angry? I suppose if I'd met him, what would he have said to me? <laughs> are you gorgeous or are you just pretending to be? Would it matter? Would it matter, possums? And now you're writing your memoirs. It seems a bit premature. And I don't think so. Well, look, Miss Bacall wrote her memoirs and her career has hardly begun. Oh, it's, it's continuing, going from strength to strength. I loved it, by the way, by myself. Still available, still in print. And one of the best showbiz autobiographies I know. And that's yeah, high yeah. praise. <laughs> by Myself, by Lauren Bacall. And my book is not yet published it's called my gorgeous life and it's going to be published at the end of the year i can't call it by myself because i'm never by myself i'm always surrounded by people i don't have enough solitude i don't think <laughs> <laughs> and i certainly won't be having it at the theater royal drury lane <laughs> where i open on the 10th <laughs> friends there and the royal box is there for you at any time and there are curtains so you can take your clothes off as <laughs> 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 Richard. Is he going to be your toy boy? Do you have plans on this No, man? no, he's too much of a... He's a man, he's a thinker. He's a grown-up person, toy boys. Neither of us have any time for them. No. We don't need them. I can take a hint. <laughs> David, no, did you say March the 10th? I did. In case this film is edited, I said March the 10th. <laughs> March 10th. March 10th. March 10th. And also, I must ask you about your, both of your films. What time will they be on? <laughs> <laughs> Do you happen to know? I don't like the ads. I like to get in for the feature. <laughs> You probably well, don't no, to you, make a phone call. You, you go to the one o'clock, you know, the lunch show, like and then go to Fortnum's yeah. and have a little tea. Pop in there to the fountain. This lovely woman is an honorary Londoner. We've found a very soft spot in our hearts for Lauren Bacall and for Richard Gere, who's also graced our stage in the West End. And on behalf of <laughs> all the people watching tonight, and I'm an honorary British person, I'd like to thank you for being on the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to thank you for being on it too. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Dave Edmund Everett and Richard Gill and Lauren Bacall. Thanks for your company. Until the next time, goodbye. <laughs>